When I'm up here on stage, they call me Brandon. <laughs> when I'm with my homies, they call me B, and when I'm with the ladies, let's just say, they call me Taken because I'm already happily spoken for. <laughs> but when I'm back at home, my mama, she called me Pookie. And though I'm not afraid to admit it, my mother calls me Pookie at like the most inopportune moments. For instance, today, on my way here to America's Got Talent, my mom screamed out the front door, make sure that you call me when you get there. Pookie. <laughs> and like, I get why my mother says it out of courtesy, but to be real, I don't understand why my mom's so concerned with my safety, praying for me as I leave the house on a daily, because I'm just a young man who has faith in Jesus. The same way that stars have faith that space will protect them from this galactic bully we call gravity, who longs to turn their star to a splendid spectacle for passerbyers to watch in awe of its death. So yes, I never really understood the issue. <laughs> and then I went on Facebook, and I realized that my mama loved me the same way every mother loved their son, fearfully. Because normally, death don't really bother me. I mean, I'm from Southside Stockton. I'm all too familiar with how some family reunions only ever take place on graveyard grass and how a hole can be a safe haven for a soul in this mortal game of hide-and-go-seek. But there is something so different about Ahmaud Arbery, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Jacob Blake and the countless others. And as I stared at that screen, I couldn't help but think I was looking at a mirror image of myself being choked out, familiarly existing, or for daring to be more than three-fifths of what them folk thought them to be. Or maybe it was simply due to their hue, and in that moment, I better understood my black mother's greatest fear was every time I leave her home on the other side of my phone will no longer be her son, but be America's next most popular hashtag accompanied by a video of her young star being gunned down by gravity as my stardust has turned splendid spectacle for pacifiers to watch in awe of my death. So yes, my mother's greatest fear is that I won't return home breathing, blood pulsing through these veins enough to still be her pookie. And my mama warned me, son, don't you dare get caught at the wrong place, at the wrong time, with that wrong colored skin. Because those three strikes, they lead to pine box convictions. And I need you to return home my pookie again. So dear mom, I promise you this. I will do everything in my power to make it back home to you. But if I don't, just know you was the very last thing on my mind. And I will always, always be your pookie. very, very, very powerful, and I'm happy that you chose this platform to talk about what you just did. I think it is so important. Your spoken words, your honest words, your true words, your necessary words. Thank you. You are my favorite act of the night. Sophia. What a great way for us to end the night. It's something special, that talent that you have, and I really wish you the best luck tonight because i want to i want to keep hearing you i want to see what you can bring next howie well i gotta say this is above and beyond anything i've seen anything i've ever heard especially at this time it was so perfect you took a you know an older white guy and put myself into the body of an African-American mother just hoping that her son survives life. And this is the conversation we're having now. This is the conversation, I'm not getting political, but this is the conversation that America needs to have. And there is no better, more entertaining, more woke, more educational way. I am so proud to be here in this room. I'm so proud that I pushed the golden buzzer. In my heart, you just won the whole night. You really did. Thank you.